Good morning and welcome, welcome everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today as we discuss a little bit about what to expect this fall semester and um, what your classes are gonna look like. Uh, my name is Tony Harrington. I work in the Office of Student Success and Retention for the Associate Dean Brainerd. And welcome, welcome everyone. Um, thank you. Thank you for giving me for the, the audio blip there. Um, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Drew Rosma, who teaches CLS classes here at GRCC. Greetings. I, I also occasionally teach computer information systems or CIS classes as well. There it is. <laughs> nice to be with you guys today. <laughs> Thanks, Drew. Um, well, thank you for joining us today. And I want to encourage you, if you have any questions, to include them in the chat in the YouTube channel here. Um, we'll try to address those as we go along. But we wanted to offer you um, a brief description of what our course modes are gonna look like and how your classes are gonna be delivered this fall. We have a, a video prepared to, to help you understand these things and let us know if you have any questions. And I think we're ready to, to get started with the video. I'm sorry about that. Um, what was uh, the last thing you said there, Antoinette? Roll them. I think we're ready to, to roll video for the course modes. I need just a minute here. Um, or perhaps this would be a, a good time to, to kind of introduce what the course modes look like. Um, we're going to have four different delivery modes of instruction. This will include online or online classes, which have no set schedule, and all of the content will be produced and delivered virtually. Um, so you'll log into your Blackboard to to have all your course interaction. Um, there's also going to be virtual classes this semester which are also offered online, like remote delivery, but they will have set meeting schedules and times. Um, so you'll interact with your instructor in real time. And then there will also be hybrid classes, which have components of both in-person, face-to-face on campus with your instructor, and some component will be delivered online as well, okay. which will not have set meeting times. Sorry about that, where you are already. Great. If you are taking a class at GRCC, it's important to know that there are four different course delivery modes. What's a mode? Good question. It's just one option for how a class is delivered. And here are your options. Online, hybrid, in-person, and virtual. The online mode. If your course is labeled online, that means everything about it is on the web. You don't meet in person. There's no specific meeting time. This is a good course if you work well independently, if you're very organized, and if you really need time flexibility. The second mode is the hybrid. This means the course is a combination of some online content and some in-person meetings. The days you meet in person are listed on the class schedule. This is a good course if you need some face-to-face -face time with your professor, but still need some flexibility with time. The third mode is in-person. This means the course just meets in a regular classroom with safe social distancing. You'll meet on campus at GRCC, and the days and times are listed in the class schedule. This is a good class if you really prefer traditional face-to-face -face instruction, and if you want to be on campus for that instruction. The fourth mode is what we call virtual. This means the class meets on the web at specific times. Unlike the online mode, in the virtual mode, you participate at designated times, even though you're doing it on your computer or device. The times are listed on the class schedule. 
This is a good choice if you want to interact with faculty and students in real time, but don't want to come onto campus, and if you prefer a consistent meeting time and structure. So, there you have it. Online, hybrid, in-person, and virtual. Four modes for you to choose from to make the most of your education at GRCC. Your safety is one of our top priorities. Any options that involve meeting in person could be changed to virtual or online if that's necessary for dealing with coronavirus risks. We look forward to seeing you on campus or online in whichever mode you choose. Or modes. Modes, dang. And that's great. That video does a, a much better job explaining the de different delivery modes than I do. Um, up next. Give yourself a little credit. I think you did a fine job. <laughs> Thanks. Up next, uh, do you, I think we want me to talk about what distance learning looks like, huh? So the standard distance learning course, hopefully you guys can all see this exciting screen with a super cool picture that is actually the picture from my ID card. I would I would recommend you change your Blackboard uh, photo, FYI, because that's what your instructor is going to see if you don't. So um, this is Blackboard. This is whichever of the modes you wind up taking a class in, you're going to see something like this. Most instructors are going to use this in order to, um, you know, lay out their courses, keep things organized, um, keep you moving throughout the course. So the You'll see something like this. You're not a professor, probably. Although, with all the talk about the parties in the chat, I'm imagining some of you must be because that's how they roll. Um, but you'll see something like this with fewer courses in the list. And the one I'm going to show you is the orientation to distance learning course. But you'll also see something like if you're in the computer information systems programs, you'll see an organization listed too. And yeah. I hear you guys out there, it's a lot of info to deal with, but hopefully it shouldn't be too overwhelming. And you'll see a scaled down version of this as well. So not so um, not so crazy as what I've got to deal with. You know, I've, been, I've got six years worth of classes in my Blackboard. So yours will be way scaled down from this. Um, when you open up a course, so I'm opening up that DLIT orientation course, uh, you'll generally start in a page like this that's um, on the announcements for the course. So this is what your instructor wants you to know. In this one, this is the introduction to distance learning. Um, if you've never taken a distance learning course, we used to make this a requirement for everything. Although now that we're in the after times, I think uh, that it, we're gonna be a little more lax about that, particularly if you're in some mixed mode version of a course. So you'll generally see announcements usually where the action is, is in the assignments tab here. So we've got four modules. For many courses, you'll see this laid out as weeks or the, um, sometimes people use units, but this is like the stuff you need to do. So in this first one, we introduce distance learning at GRCC, the next modules, um, Blackboard and other technologies. Then you do communications in the online environment, which, hey, congratulations, many of you are doing using the snaps. Is that what the kids are into these days? I'm an old man, so I don't know how these fancy computer technologies work. Um, that's a response to the chat, by the way. The, um, so that first module there, <clears throat> you've got a little text here. Sometimes people will do whole reading assignments um, in there. Sometimes people will link you to a textbook, that kind of thing. So usually some kind of reading, sorry, it's college. It's, it's how we roll. There's, there's going to be some reading involved, some sort of lecture video. This depends on how you do a, um, how, how you want to teach. So for uh, a, a synchronous class, sometimes this will be a link to a uh, Zoom meeting where you'll do basically what we're doing now, except the instructor will be looking at your little faces in a square while we do it. Um, we do recommend that for participation purposes and, um, and uh, like the, the feeling of interacting with other students that if at all possible, you have a laptop camera, cell phone camera, something so that we can see each other. It really helps that communication and brings back some of the intimacy that you have in a class. So if you're doing one of those synchronous classes where we're talking to each other in real time, uh, I tell you as a, um, 
as a as a sort of uh, instructor who does a lot of this, I I basically lived in Zoom over the summer. Way better experience if you can have a conversation as opposed to having basically the worst YouTube or Twitch stream ever, uh, which is what you get. Like if you go on Twitch and watch people play PowerPoint, sometimes that's what a class can turn into if we can't have that two way interaction. So some more reading, uh, some more. Um, they have a syllabus activity that you do. So your assignments will be in here, um, sometimes quizzes. Uh, and that's kind of what you will see in each of these module areas. So don't let it get overwhelming. It, it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, you'll also frequently find along this rail here on the side, contact information for, in this case, Raphael or Marcelata, Professor Marcelata. Um, but how to get in touch with your instructor, or you might find that information in their syllabus or resources. We'll frequently have, and this is particularly true if you're doing an asynchronous class, like a class where it's not at the same time. The cool thing about an asynchronous online class is that you're not time boxed into a particular moment, right? You don't have to, you don't have to be online at 1235 every Wednesday until 235 or something like that. You're allowed to do them at your um, schedule, although there will be due dates. So um, in this one, we're talking about vaccination for a biology class or something. And that discussion is usually graded. So you can't just walk away from it. And usually it is um, based on, you know, you must do X, Y, and Z discussion, and then you need to reply to two discussions. So while you're not boxed into a particular time, you're gonna be required to um, you know, devote that same amount of time. It's just giving you the flexibility to do it when you want. So I did my whole undergraduate and graduate degree like that. That flexibility you know, gave me the opportunity to, to raise two kids. My wife wouldn't let me do schoolwork until they were in bed. So like my classes started at, 1031 when I got done reading the story and they finished sometimes really, really late at night. Um, one of the chat questions was when should you start expecting to see emails from professors? Certainly Monday, uh, stuff should start rolling in. Some people get started a little early. The faculty preparation day is officially Friday. So that's when they'll be making sure all of their you know, courses are polished and ready to go. That was a question from Riley there in the chat. So that's a discussion. So you're already kind of doing the discussion thing if you're if you're typing in the, the chat. It, we just expect it to be a little more professional than, yo, bro, where are the parties at? So not that anybody said that in there, except somebody said that in there. You guys know there's a pandemic on, right? All right, so those are discussions. Uh, for whatever reasons, students seem to be really, really hung up on this grade thing. Uh, so there they are. There uh, usually um, depends on how it's set up. Sometimes there will be deadlines in there. Other times the faculty will communicate that to you in the syllabus or um, something like that. So in the resource section here, you'll find things you need to do the course. So in this case, there's a technology link, there's online courses, some samples and support in my classes. So since they're like my, my main jam is cybersecurity, my uh, but I'm also like, I teach programming and stuff. You'll see stuff like the, the types of computers you need and the types of uh, software you need, that kind of stuff. And, and it'll be the same, like the biology department will tell you what kind of biology stuff you need. And the, the baking folks will tell you what type of flour. No, I don't know if they'll tell you what type of flour, but, but they'll tell you the resources about that kind of class. And then uh, finally, the most important thing in every college class that I know every single student I have ever worked with reads religiously is um, how the syllabus works. That's, that's what everybody's really, really concerned about. So there'll be one of these, it'll describe the course, it'll tell you the superpowers that you will have by the time you are done with the course. So the course learning outcomes, the, what it is you're gonna learn by taking the class. Um, things you're gonna need. So if there's books, if there's software, if there's flour, if you need to buy a set of knives, which I understand is a thing in the culinary department, that kind of stuff. Um, hopefully some information about how it's gonna get graded. And then you'll see a list of college policies, student code of conduct, Title IX. Uh, take this stuff seriously. So um, you know, you're know you required to check your GRCC mail. Uh, I think you, can, uh, uh, you should be getting one of those once you've registered, uh, although IT lags a little bit. 
uh, the disability support services. I have a learning disability. I have what, like something like dyslexia called a visual sequential learning disorder. So I literally cannot spell. And um, so when I was in school, I, I would often have to reach out to disability support and say, hey, uh, I need my professors to cut me some slack on the spelling thing because that's just not, my brain doesn't work that way. And so uh, disability support would get back in touch with my professors and they'd cut me some slack on, you know, if spell check, spell checked me into the wrong word or whatever. So if you have that kind of, um, challenge, I recommend you reach out um, and I know where you're coming from. Uh, we don't want you cheating. We've got a whole list of things in the student code of conduct we expect you to follow. Uh, Title IX is the um, sexual misconduct. All of your faculty members are what is called required reporters. So if you report um, any kind of sexual misconduct to us, we will report it to the Title IX coordinator. And then other things like campus police and emergency services, which depending on how you're taking the class, that depends. And then in this one, they've listed out the assignments and the warning that if they change the syllabus, they change the syllabus. And they'll let you know through the um, through the online forums. They'll send you an email. That tends to be how we do it. So you wash, rinse, and repeat and do the assignments for 14 or so weeks, and you're all done. Uh, usually, we expect students to get their books from the student bookstore. Um, the student bookstore's got a website. You'd usually everything at GRCC, GRCC student book store. If you Google stuff for us, usually it's pretty well indexed, so it'll take you right there. Um, be careful with online bookstores or Brian's. Some of the books, uh, this is particularly true in the sciences, come with like a code to get you into a website um, that that can. Uh, that can get you into trouble. But you should be able to find the class, the books for the courses that you're taking right now. So if I was taking CIS 116, I'm not taking, I'm teaching. I don't know which one. Let's see Ken Smith's sections. We'll get the materials for that course. And this is one where you can't buy that Zybooks access on the, uh, on Chegg or on, Brian's or what have you, you got to get it from GRCC. So I think I may have overstayed my time. I'm trying to see if we have any more questions that I could answer for you guys real quick. Um, let me just finally say academic support services are your friends. We have the ATC lab on our side of the building for, well, on our side of the building that's currently under construction, but for um, stuff that we teach in the technology center in the school of workforce development, um, Sue Del Rosso is the lab manager over there and um, they are doing a great job of doing virtual support. So support like this, if you have a problem with a CIS class or you didn't quite understand X, Y, or Z, they're hosting a Zoom walk-in where you can just um, log into a Zoom room and start talking to them. So if the difference between Zoom and virtual means that it's not in real time, I mean, you, you'll be talking to a lab tutor in a couple of seconds, right after they, um, right after they, you know, log you into the Zoom, they basically keep you into a, into a room, uh, and then a waiting room, and then let you in and help you out with whatever it is you're working on. So I think that's all the things we wanted to check out. Um, I'm pretty sure there might be a recording of this later. Wouldn't swear to it. Yes, there will be. Okay. So yes, there will be. And I think uh, that was all the questions we had, but uh, we can get back to them. Keep them coming if you don't. Um, I, I, I am prompted to remind you that apparently, no, you don't need to actually take the distance learning course uh, to get into a class. But if you've never done one before, it'll be super helpful. Um, I have had students who kind of bluffed their way through it, and then they get to the middle of the term and find out they haven't turned out, um, haven't turned out any of the homework for the, like, first half of the class because they didn't realize that's what they were doing. We uh, try to reach out and let people know um, what's going on. It is important to buy the books if your uh, professors require the books. That's definitely a big deal. Um, hopefully there's aid available to help you get that. Uh, we do our darndest to, to try and use open educational resources wherever possible, uh, but sometimes it's just not feasible to do this. For certain subjects, the, the subject matter changes so fast that if we use one of the free books, they're out of date and they're, they're not going to give you the education we want to provide here. Cool.
Drew, this is a question that I think that that is really well suited for you to answer. Um, it says my online class also lists the Applied Technology Center as a location. Do I need to go there for my class if I have my own computer? And I so it depends on which of these formats you enrolled for. So if you um, if it has a date and time in a classroom in your schedule, that probably means you registered for an in-seat class. A number of faculty um, are going to be providing either high flex, which means we'll record that classroom experience and stream it. So some of them um, on that first day will um, be, be like high and by. This is the first time we're gonna meet and the last time we're gonna meet. Um, some of them will have certain things that can only be done in person. And for those kind of classes, you know, we are doing every single thing we can to keep everybody safe, trying to follow all the CDC guidelines. We've had a committee that's been trying to figure out the best way to do in-person college since this thing popped in March. We've got class sizes cut at least in half and in some places even more than that. So you will have to um, show up and eventually um, and eventually figure out what's going on if you're in one of those classes. So you should have um, email from us and to your personal email um, already kind of uh, explaining that. that. That just, that's a great uh, way for me to, there's a couple of things I want to touch on real fast before we go too far. Um, Somebody was asking about when they're going to receive their uh, GRCC email and how. This should be delivered through the mail to your house, the, the address that we have on register. And then if you're having trouble or you haven't received that yet, contact the Enrollment Center. Um, the phone number for that is going to be 234-3300. Um, there was also another question that I thought was quite timely. Um, Oh, there was a question about several people that are that have hybrid classes will have like a in-person lab component and then the online remote component. Um, and it does list like the starting date in your online center. But if you have any questions about what days you're expected to be on campus for that class, it is recommended that you reach out to your instructor and they'll be able to best provide you the information for that. Um, and we did have another question about organizing and how to stay prepared for your classes. And I think that's a great opportunity to introduce a short video that has some students sharing their experiences and how they best stay organized for their classes. So if we're ready, we can, we can show that. Overall, it's been a great experience. Um, I had two phenomenal teachers uh, that changed my experience of online learning. These teachers went above and beyond and made videos to get to know the um, professor. You know, you don't put a face with a name if you don't know them. You know, you can go to rateyourprofessor.com or something and hope for a picture and know who you're working with, but otherwise you don't get to know their personality or kind of what they want from you um, as an individual. And I think both my teachers really did that this year. I liked it. I think the professors are very good. Um, you can tell that they have refined their classes um, to make them work. They have stuff due at the end of the week so you can pace yourself. So you can say, I can get assignment one due or done tonight and then have it done for the rest of the week and then work on the rest of them later. I am a single mom to two wonderful girls and I also work full time. It was the best way to get what I needed to get done. Make sure to stay on top of the classwork. Just because it's an online class and you don't see the professor's face every week does not mean that you don't have just as much work, if not more work. Do not wait until the last minute to get stuff done. Definitely do your reading and pay attention to the deadlines. I had a lot of issue with that. Definitely know what's due when. That's a big thing. I would say make sure you check your school email every day and Blackboard. Um, try to stay connected even though you're not on campus. J 
just try to stay motivated. I had expectations to kind of have an easy semester, but I also had phenomenal teachers this semester that made my online learning a lot easier. But if you're not gonna commit to it and you don't ask around, you don't see the type of class that you're gonna look into, and then you just go into a full force, it's gonna be a lot more than what you expected, I think. Um, maintain a schedule. It's really easy when you're online to say, oh, I'll get to it tomorrow, but then tomorrow comes and you don't feel like doing it. So, you know, kind of make a class setting for myself. Definitely time management is a big, big one and keeping up with every assignment and making sure that everything is ready to go and, and before it's due. You're given a little bit more responsibility with an online class in terms of this is the work that's due, you have this long to do it, and you need to find the time to get it done. That doesn't mean that you're flying solo on this. You still have a professor, you still have other classmates that are out there to help you. Welcome back. Um, we are still monitoring the chat. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to share them there. Um, it looks like we do have some questions coming in. There's one specifically for Drew um, saying that there was a conversation going on about um, something that isn't showing up in Blackboard anymore. Oh, I see you, you addressed that. Ben in there trying to talk to people. Uh, uh, Hannah's question there, though, um, something's not showing up in your Blackboard anymore. That might be the um, online course um, uh, since uh, perhaps you already took it, perhaps you already completed it. But if you reach out to our um, our support folks, they can probably help get that straightened out for you. One thing we wanted to remind you about, too, um, for this online course stuff, the um, the expected timelines. Um, I tell my students uh, anywhere from two to three hours per credit hour outside of class. So you've got a three hour class, plan on those three hours. And then any, you know, depending how fast you read, how if you watch the videos at 2x or whatever, however much it's going to take to to get that done on top of uh, class. So just make sure you're budgeting your time appropriately. So if you're taking a three hour class, I mean, you should at least be planning for six um, more. Uh, we got questions about how do I deal with hurdles for stress and anxiety. And we have counselors who can help you with those things. And those resources are available on our website. Um, you know, we are here to help you succeed. And we, the folks in, in academic support do that across the spectrum. We want you to succeed academically, socially, yeah, it's stressful right now. Everybody's, you know, trying to, to keep their heads in a good space. So you're not alone there. It's weird. There's also some talk about um, in-person class options and, and maybe um, I could address that just a little bit. So the vast majority of our classes have been offered through some sort of remote learning delivery mode. Um, there are still a small fraction of classes that are available in person. So if you want to make changes to your schedule, that's something you can look up, um, see if the class is available in Class Finder by going to our homepage, grcc.edu. Scroll down to about the middle of the page and you'll see a little box that says Class Finder. It does allow you to search for open classes um, based on the type of delivery mode. And I think that um, while those classes are, are limited and very popular. There may still be some availability to make changes to your schedule. And just real quick, I shared my screen there. And if you, even if you just throw GRCC class finder into the Google machine, it will show you the GRCC class finder. And if I wanted to register for CIS 100, which everybody should do, um, it would show me that Chad Seitzma has a class that's an online course. If we looked at classes that were open and full, We've been pretty busy over here. Um, you would see that several of these meet at a particular time. So this one meets Monday, 6, 15 to 9, 15 um, as an in-person class. So we do have um, a handful of those running as well. 
before I get nagged, I'll stop my screen share. Anything else? Um, will biology be online and in person? Uh, if there's no meeting times, your instructors should be reaching out with uh, you. Um, I know they, they did some interesting stuff with finding online biology labs. I was part of some of those conversations. They're, they're you know, it's time for us to innovate. So we're trying to, but um, make sure you hear from A, your schedule and B, from your, from your instructor. Mm -hmm. What would happen if the hybrid classes and the pandemic correlate? Will hybrid classes stop and what will happen with the students? That's a great question. And I think we're gonna have to cross that bridge when we get to it. A, a decision will be made, you know, and, and some of that's out of our control. You know, the governor sent us home last year. So like we, had, we weren't able to make that call, but that's a good question. I think another feature that, that might be really valuable um, that people may not realize coming for free along with their education at GRCC is an opportunity to get some um, additional support for your classes through tutor tutoring services. Um, these are available through a remote format. Um, they are available for um, virtually every subject that, that you can think of that, that we have available on campus. And we actually have a, a brief video that explains what that's like. Just because face-to-face -face tutoring may not be an option, that doesn't mean you can't get help that you need right now. GRCC tutoring is still available online. I wasn't sure how hard and like complicated it was to be to use it, but it was super easy. So that was one thing that I really liked. I thought that the people being online tutors wouldn't be as helpful as like in-person tutors. And I was like totally wrong. Came down to as easy as a couple clicks and typing your name. And then before you knew it, within five minutes, you were getting help one-on-one. -on -one. I thought it was gonna be more like distance. I wasn't gonna be learning or things like that. But no, it turns out that it's, it's way better than that. I'm actually like every time I connect with them, they get they get me an answer. I was nervous that the tutors wouldn't know what I was talking about since it wasn't face to face. But with screen sharing, uh, made that possible and it made the tutoring sessions go a lot smoother. I could share my screen with the tutors for them to see like where I was stuck or what I was working on exactly. Tutors were able to annotate. They almost had a pencil and could almost just draw on your screen or their screen. Overall, I love how the math lab is super easy to access and able to thoroughly answer all of my questions. Who wouldn't want a free editor to like read over your paper and give you feedback and catch your mistakes or tell you what's good or that you're on the right track for free in your home? They will definitely help you relieve some stress and get your work done. Get started with online tutoring by going to Blackboard and finding tutoring under the organization list. If you have any questions, email tutoring at grcc.edu or call 616-234-4145. That's pretty good. How to access tutoring. I probably can show you how to do that real quick. Um, so I don't know if it'll be in this. Back in my Blackboard, I have a computer information systems link inside a Blackboard. So if uh, I wanted to access tutoring, I fire up Zoom, which I can't kind of do right now because I'm on Zoom, but you get the idea. You've probably seen Zoom. You click on the link, it says, what's the meeting ID? You put in the meeting ID, it might ask for a password. That password's GRCC tutor, and you're off and running. So for the ATC lab, there'll be one of these for the math department, there'll be one of these for um, everything else. Uh, you'll find the info for those kind of things inside of there. So there's a bunch of videos on how to do that. Uh, I'm going to throw this link. Well, I guess I can't throw that link into the, the chat. 
Um, some of those secrets will be inside of the courses, so that password and everything. But this will get you a start, and then you can definitely reach out by phone too if you uh, need more support. And I'm going to throw that link into the chat for you too. We had another question. If you need a Raider card, needs a strong word, um, you will have a student ID number. At some point, you'll want to get one. Um, when you want to access on campus stuff, though, you will probably need to have yourself a Raider card. I'm going to stop sharing that. There's a question about how to put money on your Raider card in order to use the parking garage. Um, you can actually do that online. You can do that through the online center. Um, I'm going to drop a link in the chat here to, to let you know how to get there. Ideal. You also need that um, some sort of valid ID, so a driver's license would probably do it, passport if you happen to have one of those, but a Raider card for a lot of the online testing stuff too. So a lot of faculty are going to be doing like one of these video proctor deals um, and you'll, you'll need to present that ID for when you take a proctored test. Measures against trolls on Zoom. Yeah, that's why that password's there. Don't tell anybody that you just saw it. There's only 200 some people on this live stream. So just keep it between us and every other student on the campus. But the proctors can kick people if something gets crazy. Renard's running this particular Zoom meeting. He's about to kick me right now. That does bring up another question that's that has been um, in the chat. And that is somebody has asked if Zoom is the preferred format or if they can expect that there might be a different format for virtual meetings for classes. I know that some professors have been using uh, Google Meets. Um, Drew, do you have any further insight from a, a instructor standpoint? Uh, you know, I, I think that does come down to preference. Some of the departments are gonna be using Google Meet. Some of us will use Zoom. It's six of one half a dozen of the other guys. You, you click on a link and you get a video chat and I prefer Zoom, um, but they're all the same deal. You know, we can share screens like I've been doing. You can see somebody's face, you can talk. It's all the same idea. We've been asked if you have to pick up your reader card in person and unfortunately you, you do, it cannot be shipped to an address and this is for security purposes. Um, your reader card is, is almost like a, um, almost like a debit card, like you can set up to have money on it that you'll use while on campus, whether it be in the bookstore or paying for parking. So in order to protect your account and your information, you do have to come and pick it up in person. But again, it is not required unless you're going to be on campus. Um, most of what you need to access if you're going, going to be doing your, your learning virtually will be um, through your um, Blackboard password that you set up and also through your Raider card number. And there is a great question here asking about those who have um, certain needs or disabilities. And there is an entire department on campus that is committed to making sure that everybody has access to the same learning opportunities and recognizing that not everybody does learn the same way. So I wanted to share, I'm gonna put it in the chat too, but I wanted to share, it is actually called Disability Support Services. It is available on our website. Um, I think Drew has already shown that it's it's a very searchable site that if you just go to Google and type like the combination of what you're looking for with GRCC, you will be able to find many of our services listed this way. For Remember what I said about the spelling? <laughs> yeah. So uh, just Google up disability support services or as close as you can get. Exactly. And I'll get you there. We'll catch you. All right. Yeah, sorry, guys. Uh, I, I don't expect anybody to be using Discord. Once upon a time, Discord only lets you have so many people in a uh, live stream anyway. So, uh, But the uh, faculty's not quite that hip. Also, then we could start doing like that uh, Discord premium stuff and making you pay for emojis. You don't want that. And that, that conversation about where to get a Raider card is, in fact, um, they're holding operations in the Raider grill 
which if you're familiar with campus, you'll know that that is on the second floor of the student center on the main campus um, downtown at 143 Bostwick. But if you have any questions about where to go once you get on campus or just to kind of prepare your visit, because this is a reminder that there is going to be a health screen that you need to complete before you come on campus. Um, you can access that through your online center or there is an app available. It's another thing that I'll throw in the chat for us so that we have a link. Um, but there is also a requirement to wear a face covering while you're on campus. So there's a, there was a great email that came out on Monday that, that lists all the requirements for being on campus. And I will throw a chat in there. Good deal. It looks like it's winding down in here. I might be able to do Twitch for my ethical hacking class. Um, if a class in your list disappeared, uh, might have been canceled. Um, I know we had some difficulty finding instructors this semester because uh, many of them were, you know, had the same health concerns everybody else did. Um, there is a campus map, although again, the Google machine is your friend. Um, the campus is actually uh, includes locations in Holland and um, is bigger than you might imagine. Um, but yeah, there are, there are campus maps searchable on our website. Well, they're not links. You'll have to cut and paste them because Google, uh, the links that um, are in the, the, the chat, you'll have to copy and paste those into your web browser. It's not, a, it's not smart enough to turn them into links. Actually, there's security problems if you did that, so. Interesting question about if uh, not able to wear a mask, um, what to do. They, I know disability support has some options with that. Um, and I'm sure that's gonna be handled on a per case basis. Exactly. And that's where asking students to get in touch with, with disability support services, which is the, the link you were showing us earlier. Yep. Yasmin asked if we're expected to talk, present and contribute on Zoom, uh, probably. Uh, we, it definitely contributes to the class. So like I said, do your best to have a video a camera of some sort, do best to have a microphone. Um, of course, I'm sure your professor will be understanding and take things as they come, but uh, I certainly expect students to interact in my classes. I, I expect many faculty will as well. Um, and we've got technology help if you need it. They're doing laptop checkouts, they're doing hotspot checkouts. Um, so if, you know, if money's an object or an obstacle for you, we can help you work around that. Depending on the class, Josiah asked if textbooks are on hard copy or online. Some are, some aren't. Many of my classes, all of the materials are on materials, but a lot of other classes, it's not. Um, for online learning, it does vary by each professor, Catherine's asking. Um, so many of us do videos. Um, for us, there's a lot of like code assignments and labs and running computers remotely and that kind of stuff. Um, and it'll be different based on what the learning outcomes of each class are and what the department is. So we can't give you a hard and fast answer for that. And, uh, some of it's the preference of the professor. You know, they, they have enough academic freedom to do what they think is best in each of their classes. So if they think reading is the way to go, I mean, like in an English class, maybe that's the case, you know. And guys, treat your cable guys super nice because I've been having internet problems all week and I have a cable guy standing outside of my office right now, like waiting to change out my cable modem. <laughs> so treat the folks at Charter and Comcast or Xfinity or whatever they're calling themselves these days, super nice because they're, they're working hard on this, uh, this, uh, this whole Rona thing to keep us all communicating and stuff. The unsung heroes of the coronavirus outbreak, ladies and gentlemen, are the IT people. Agreed, agreed, kudos. Um, I also wanted to share that uh, Drew was talking about how GRCC is supporting students by providing access to technology. Um, this might be laptops, wireless headsets, um, hotspots, if you, if you live in an internet desert. 
but all of this can be accessed um, one by using the Google machine. You can just Google GRCC technology health, but also it's, it's run through our library. So I'm going to throw a link in the chat that will connect you with library resources that may help you. There are um, certainly more resources available through the library that we haven't mentioned. Um, some of the things that you may not expect is they do have uh, some graphing calculators that you can check out, um, a variety of resources, both physical and virtual resources. So I'm going to throw that link in there. I'm not sure exactly what TRIO is planning. Uh, there was a question about whether things were going to be offered online or in seat. Um, Antoinette, did, have you heard what uh, TRIO is planning for their stuff? Um, it um, is going to be, so this is actually an opportunity maybe to discuss more, um, more of a, a large scale approach. So many of the services that you would see provided or the um, engagement events. So there are, there are like um, TRIO and the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion will be running the same events, but they're going to be all virtual. Um, if you have not engaged with these areas through social media, that's a, a good way to, to keep up with what's going on and what events are upcoming. Um, also, on our website, they should have upcoming events listed. Uh, I would reach out to TRIO and, and ask, hey, like, what's going to go on this semester? What can we expect? And in fact, I'll throw a link in the, in the chat about that, too. All right. It looks like it's starting to wind down in there. If we, you know, have no further questions, thank you guys for coming out. Um, we look forward to an amazing and successful semester. Um, the chat will stay open for a while afterwards if something comes up. Um, seems like that's about it, huh? Thank you everyone for joining us today. Deal. All right, class, pull the plug in the live stream. I think we're done here. Nice desktop. <laughs> well, my apologies, folks. I um yeah, even on the, the the YouTube chatting piece, I was prepared, but um, once I got in there, I realized it said I had to create a channel in order to chat. 